Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer. Welcome back to Train Sim World. And man, I don't, I don't know. Let's uh, hop into my profile. That's not what I look like, by the way. So the West Somerset Railway DLC. We did some scenarios. There's a couple more scenarios, but I took a look at them and they look pretty similar to the scenarios that we've already done. Uh, rapid Transit. I suppose we could do that. You know what? Let's do... We haven't done anything in the NEC, the Northeast Corridor, for a while. Let's do a service with the ACS-64. Let's pick some weather. Uh, you know what? I'm a... I'm an autumn. I like to think of myself as an autumn. Let's do a little autumn mist. 36 degrees, so it's going to be beautiful. Now, where do we want to go? Let's do... Um, it's autumn, so let's go a little bit earlier, but not too early. Let's go uh, Newark Liberty, New Rochelle. Operate a northeast regional service northbound from Newark Liberty International Airport with an additional stop at Secaucus Junction. Be aware of the extended layover at New York Penn. You know what? I will be aware of it. I will. I don't know how long this is going to take. Let's say we go half an hour. I'm looking at my... Looking at my watch here. Let's see. We go half an hour. It's 10 minutes after 1 p.m. Right. Hey, objective complete. Look at us. We're doing great so far. Unlock doors. You know I will. Unlock doors on the right. And while that's happening, let's get the train ready. Turn some lights on. Turn some ditch lights on. Turn some... Turn the lights in the office off. Turn those on. Uh, reverser to forward. Yep. Let's take a look at our whip. It's a good looking train, I have to say. I'm a big fan. It's sort of like... in Back up. There we go. Like in a way I look at it and I think, ah, it's kind of bland. You know, there's not really a lot to it. But it's just your, your typical Bombardier electric locomotive. You know, it'll do. Right, so we'll get these folks loaded up, and then we'll take off. Well, that is a gray day. Well, so it goes. All right. Wait until 9.17. I'll wait till 9.17. I can do that. So, yeah, it, it's Wednesday is going to be our train sim world day, right? I tried to get I tried to get on the schedule. You know, I was posting three videos a day just to get some content on the channel. And then I backed it down to two per day. But I'm mindful, because I'm reading a lot. I'm like studying a lot about YouTube and I'm mindful of spamming. People are like, don't spam me. And my videos do tend to be longer. So I think it makes sense that if I'm gonna post an hour video or, or a 45 minute video every day, that I not post two or three every day. Right? Like, I want to be respectful of the fact that people have stuff to do. They can't sit for two or three hours a day watching my videos. Right. Where are we going? We're going to Newark Penn. It's 2.4 miles from here. And we need to be there in about five minutes. Where's my horn at? Here we go. Don't need the bell. Here's my favorite part about the Northeast Corridor DLC. It's the absolutely frantic speed limit changes. I swear, like every couple hundred yards, the speed limit changes. And the best one is, best one that I've found, is when it's, like right now it says in 700 yards it goes to 90. So I'm getting ready to go to 90 and then all of a sudden it'll say in 50 yards it goes to 30. Right? And it's like, whoa. Well, Got to get my train slowed down, and I never do, but not a big deal. Right, so just a couple of miles to Newark Penn, and then from there we're going to, we're stopping in Secaucus, is that right? And then we're going to New York Penn, and then we're going to New Rochelle. But I, I think maybe I'll go 30 to 45 minutes today. 
You know, if you've seen one, you've seen one route, you've seen them all. And what's, ah, uh -huh, see, right there, oh, right there, it just did it. That thing that I was saying it does, it did it. Oh, game. You mess with my emotions, you really do. Anyway. Oh, all right, then we're back to 70. <laughs> It's fascinating to me that, right, like the truck sim. I could I could make truck sim videos all day. Love me some truck sim videos. But I realize that you really need to be into truck sim to, like, sort of spot the subtlety, you know? Like I did uh, in my next-gen Scania a couple days ago, I accidentally hauled a 60 ton locomotive and that's kind of you know if you're into truck sim you know that's like kind of a i mean it's not the biggest deal but it's kind of a big deal because it's you really shouldn't try to haul something that heavy with a four by two but i just kind of accidentally did it that's the way it worked out and you know it all it all turned out okay in the end so that's a little bit interesting maybe you know but only if you're into truck sim and i think something like train sim like you could look at truck sim a person could look at truck sim and be like every episode is the same you just drive a truck and I'm like yeah but and then it's like no it's not really a but it's just yeah every episode we just drive a truck and so you get on something like train sim and it's like I, I don't get it well, you just drive a train and it's the same thing you're like no but then you're like yeah yeah, kind of, kind of all it is. All right, let me get on the brakes here. Let me get on the brakes here. Slow it down. Slow it down. I got rid of all my markers, which is awesome, but can be a little, a little challenging sometimes. And they just fired up outside my hotel again doing whatever they're doing out there. Oh, missed it. Nope, they're going to give it to me. Okay, perfect. Uh, unlock the right side doors. And I think we were even on time, which is... It's not unusual for us. I mean, we're pretty... Good morning. We're pretty timely, right? We're mindful of our of our schedule Good morning but it's still every if I feel like every time I'm on time it's like a little victory maybe that's just me right oh hey right there you go so let's get back in here get that closed have a seat so yeah, I, I get that uh, that these simulation videos, in many ways, they are all the same. But for me, I mean, I like watching simulation videos, and I I don't think they're all the same. I think 1923. Okay, so we need to wait here for a minute. I don't think they're all the same. I think each of them, in their own way, is different, and I find I find a lot of tips and tricks and techniques about how to play different sims. I've gone to a ton of videos, I've searched a ton of videos, like if I have a problem that I can't solve or if there's something I can't figure out, I will find videos. And, and in some cases I don't find a solution, but I at least find that somebody else has the problem and that they can't find a solution either. And maybe it's just, you know, that sim or that game is broken or whatever. And for if you have a problem and it's just like driving you absolutely crazy, and you go online and you find that somebody else is having the same problem, the first thing you, you feel, or the first thing I feel is like relief. Okay, I'm not crazy, that really is a problem. And then if I find other videos where people can't solve the problem, or if you find a video that's like, you know, game bug or game broken or whatever, Secaucus Junction. Okay, breaks off, and here we go. And I'm not gonna sound the horn in the platform. I don't wanna like, Train horns are ridiculous, man. They are so effing loud. I don't want to blow anybody up here. 
So to find a problem that other people are having or to find that, that there is a glitch in the game or that a game is bugged out or something, and some you don't necessarily have to find a YouTube video for it. Sometimes you can just find a forum thread that's like, you know, whatever, whatever, or even the developer saying, yeah, we know about it, we're going to patch it in in the next update or whatever. To me, you know, when you're when you're finding those sorts of things and and interacting with the community, that to me is super cool. And that's another reason I'm making these videos. I just uh it's it sounds really corny to say, but I just want to give something back, man. Video games have have always been important to me. I I love them and I I want to uh, participate. Yeah, that's a good word. Participate in the community and, and be a... I don't know. Not a good gamer. Not a good gamer like uh, like how well I game, but... Uh, help me out here. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, mindful? Eh, whatever. You know what I'm saying. I want to give back to the community what the community has given to me. Yeah. That's what, I, that's what I mean. All right, so now this is that speed limit thing, man. This is when it gets me. So it says in 90 yards, sorry, in 200 yards, we're going to 90 miles an hour. Right? So we accelerate. And we need to wait for the tail of the train to pass into that 90 mile an hour zone. Now we're at 60, not 90. All right. I'm a little scared, I have to tell you. I feel like something bad's about to happen, speed limit-wise. It always does. At least on this route, it does. So we're going to... Secaucus, and then into... New York City. I don't know how I feel about the cloudy. It's it's definitely um, there's a little bit of variety, you know, to mix up the weather like that. It's pretty. It's kind of moody, you know. And we're in daylight too. I started this earlier, and I wanted to do evening service from Newark Liberty to New Rochelle like a 7.30 train, which would be the train that the last people that fly in, well, maybe not the last people, last people that fly in, fly in at like 10 or 11 p.m., but people that fly in, you know, you had business in Dallas or Atlanta or someplace, and then you fly in toward the end of the day, and you take that 7.30 train back home to Long Island. I thought that would be a fantastic idea. Only problem was... Hang on. Only problem was, uh, it was dark. And dark videos, I think, I'm, I'm convinced now. I didn't want to admit it. I didn't want to, like, I didn't want to deal with that reality. I was in denial. But I have come to terms now with the fact that dark videos just, I wouldn't say they suck. But it's, that's tricky. You know, dark videos are... I would not blame you for not wanting to watch a video that's, like, dark. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. All right, so we're good on speed limit. All right. And I'm going to hop back in here because we're going to have to make a stop soon. Moment, please. Going to cough. Right. I'm so happy to have a dump button. I really am. That was my first few videos. I was... Well, my first few videos, you know, it, and again, it's like a, a progress thing, maybe. What's his name again? I'm looking for a screenshot, by the way. That's why I keep hopping out here. Oh, Jesus Make it stop. Whew. 
my first few videos, I was just figuring out what the hell I was doing. So I'm not, uh, I'm not like ashamed of them or anything. And I left them up specifically so I could go back and like see how I used to do it and continue to, to improve the, the videos. But I had, uh, I've got an Artemis, a uh, Logitech Artemis headset. And it never really occurred to me because all I ever, I, I rarely use the microphone. I didn't, I don't do a lot of like multiplayer gaming. It's just not my, not my jam. So I rarely use the microphone. I just use it as a, as a surround set, surround headset. Surround headset. Yeah, I said that right. A surround headset and, uh, didn't even know that it had a mute button because I rarely use the microphone. So it was, how are we late already? Oh, game. Oh, game. So it had a mute button. Of course it had a mute button. I just didn't know it had a mute button. And then when I found it, I was all like, gee. To be able to, uh, hmm, we going to make it? Slowing, slowing. Oh, are you kidding me? Look at that. Oh, it all worked out. On the right is where we're unloading. So yeah, I had a mute button. Of course I had a mute button. I just didn't know I had a mute button. And then when I found it, Ah, it was like a banner day. I was so excited. So we're in Secaucus. Um, wait, is this? Yeah, we already went to Newark Penn. Now we're in Secaucus. Doesn't really say anything on the map. Hmm. Can you get on these other tracks? I feel like these are just decorative. Maybe they're going to bring them in later. Or potentially they are for yard work. Hard to say. Right. Oh, crap. Uh, so yeah, that's that's my story. All right. Lock doors. Lock doors. New York Pen. Nine thirty-eight. So we got seven minutes to get to New York Pen. And I think, okay, so we're coming in from the New Jersey side. But I believe the configuration is about the same whether you're coming in from New Jersey or Long Island, where you dip down under the river. It's like a, not a, not a really steep downgrade, but it, it's, a, it's a fairly, it's like a 1.5% downgrade. And then about a 2% back up into the, into the station. And then the same thing on the other side when you go under the other river. So it's what? It's the Hudson on the west side and the East River on the east side? I think so. I'm trying to remember my New York City geography. Right. So we'll get we'll get into New York Penn. We're what, we've been going about twenty minutes. We might be we might be half an hour when we get into New York Penn. We'll see what we think when we get there, if we want to continue on. Because I, I think from New York Penn to New Rochelle, it's about 20 minutes, maybe? Maybe. And I don't want to uh, overstay my welcome. Yeah. So let's we want to end up at 75. So maybe we'll cut it off in New York Pen. We'll, we'll see. See how we feel when we get there. There was a big patch. Well, 
I don't know if it was a patch. There was an update that came in for Train Sim World today when I opened Steam. It downloaded about 500 meg, and there's no new DLC, so that almost almost has to be. Uh, well, we're starting our beginning our descent. Right, so we're headed down under the river now. Uh, about 500 meg of of update or patch or whatever. So. The game, could, it seems to me, and I could just be imagining this, could just be like wishful thinking, whatever, you tell me. But the game seems to continue to speed up. And I know when Train Sim World first came out, like the first iteration, you know, V1 of CSX Heavy Hall, I know people were like, damn, this, this game kills my GPU. A lot of frame rate issues and challenges. And so the first update, I want to say, they really, the developers, Dovetail really did a lot to optimize the game and speed it up. And I don't know if that's an ongoing process, but I do, I really feel like every patch and every update, the game gets a little faster and a little faster. And most of my settings, like on all games, uh, all sims that I run, I am on uh, mostly high, no ultra. And I believe on this game, I actually have a couple settings on medium. But it does seem to go faster. Like FPS wise, it seems to go faster with every update and every patch. So good on Dovetail if they're actually doing that. And if it's just me noticing it and it's really not happening, then I don't know, whatever. I need to adjust my meds. I'm kidding. I don't actually take meds. Coffee in the morning, glass of wine at night. That's my pharmaceutical regimen. Uh, for what that's worth. Sometimes a Red Bull. Got to be careful with the Red Bull, though, man. That stuff. It is the business. Now, we're slowing down with the dynamic brake, right? We're using the, the whatever, the reverse induction electric braking. And I wonder sometimes if we should be doing that. Because it does slow the train, but it slows it very slowly. And I wonder sometimes if we shouldn't be continuing faster, right? Like going faster for longer and then braking more quickly with the locomotive brakes. Because we do seem to always get into Penn Station a little bit late. Like 30 seconds to a minute late. And I wonder sometimes if that's the reason why. If we shouldn't carry more speed for longer and then brake harder closer to our destination. We're actually doing okay today. We've, we've got a minute and a half to go. Not quite half a mile. All right. And actually, we're climbing, right? So we've got the upgrade now. We're climbing back up, coming out from under the river, climbing back up to the station. I think we're going to be okay. Maybe. Maybe. We're going to go through this little Slender Man deal right here that always kind of freaks me out. You know, something that's also interesting is I feel like every time I've done this route, it sent me to a different platform when I got into Penn Station, and I find that little details like that, right, little realism details, I find really uh, immersive. I like stuff like that. I think we are just going to be maybe 30 seconds late. Because that's the platform right there. Like, we're literally pulling up to the platform. But we're... Oh, fantastic. But we're going to be just a few seconds late. I think they want you there within a minute. I think that's the cutoff. If you're there within one minute of your scheduled time, that's close enough. 
could be wrong about that. And this is a long train. I want to get it all on the platform. Right. A minute, seven seconds late. Unlock left. There you go, folks. Now, it did say we had a layover here. And I was curious about something. In this, pardon me. So there's, you can go in here. Where is it? And you can go in here. Yeah. So this goes through to, right? There's our office. Little restroom. It's nice. And there's this panel here, right? So, close that, close that, pardon me, and then if we go in here, did I just see some, ah, okay, interesting. So then if we go in here, I've been on this train by the way, and this is pretty much exactly what it looks like. These are, right, there's your business class. More business class. Right. Still more business class. Business class. Oh, fantastic! Here's our little, uh, here's a little cafe car. Huh. Very nice. And then here's the other half of the cafe car, and that means that back here ought to be coach. Uh, do you want to give up control of service? No. No, of course not. I must always have control. So. Pretty long train. And it sounds like we're wearing shoes made of old newspaper. Right, so let's get back to our office. This is all very authentic, by the way. Uh, been on this, this train, been on NEC trains. Uh, been on these sort of, uh, I don't want to say generic service, but to me this is just a regular regular train like you would take anywhere in that area. And then the Acela just runs kind of a dedicated route. But the stations all look, I mean, this is, they've done their homework. This is very well executed. I can't speak as much to European railroads and obviously freight railroads. I haven't spent any time on or around freight railroads other than waiting for freight trains to pass. But for these types of passenger trains, yes, they have my seal of approval for realism. Right. Well, this is certainly a compelling video. Interesting. I'm looking around here. Um, what else? I know there's a whole bunch of stuff if we turn this way. There are a whole bunch of stuff over here. Yeah. And I guess if you, like, really take this stuff seriously, and it's funny because, like, I think I take it seriously, and then I see all this stuff and I realize, like, oh, no, no, no. Other people take it much more seriously. 
But I guess all those controls actually do something if you're that into it. Me personally, I am not that into it. Lovely. Beautiful. So many gizmos. Right, I think we're fixing to get out of here. Let's do it. Let's get out of here. Spoke too soon. Right, now let's get out of here. Beautiful. Lock doors on the left. Breaks off. New Rochelle, 16 miles. You want to do it? Let's do it. It's been exactly 30 minutes right now, 16 miles. Should take us about 15 minutes to give us a 45 minute episode. Yeah, let's do it. Now, I'm curious about something, and I didn't even think to try this. You know how detailed the underground stops are on the rapid transit, right? The Leipzig subway stations? I'm curious. It never even occurred to me to, like, there's a train. Very nice. It never even occurred to me to uh, run down the platform and go up one of the escalators and see if we could get up into... Penn Station. Hmm. I'll have to try that next time. Right. So a little bit more Slender Man. And then we can open her up a little bit, get under the East River, and then get out into the fresh air of Long Island. Relatively. I think as soon as the end of our train comes into this speed limit zone, I believe we can open it up to 60. There we go. Beautiful. And I don't know how that sound is. I'll check on the replay. I know... This game in particular, sound is tricky because the electric locomotives are so much quieter than the diesel. So you need to keep them turned down so the diesel aren't too loud, but that makes the electric a little too quiet. And I don't feel like messing with it every time. Reason being, if I don't get it to exactly the right place, then it ends up being too loud. I'd rather have it too, too quiet than too loud. thought about writing all this stuff down but for one thing that's just not how I do things I tend to be a little bit more spontaneous than that and also uh, I it, it would backfire on me somehow it, it wouldn't work if I tried to like write down settings for different sims it would just turn into a big mess I think I know I know it would I know me I know how me is. Alright, so now we're coming back up the other side. Climbing out from underneath the river. Now, I don't get claustrophobic, but I can definitely understand how a person could get claustrophobic. Because if you think about it, like, right now, you're, you're in one tube, and then that tube is in another tube, and then that tube is under a river. That's a little... You know what I'm saying? And I have a feeling if you turn the lights out... Well, I almost said that out loud. The original... 
the original statement as my brain assembled it was, I bet if you turned the lights out, it would be pretty dark. And I caught myself right before I said that because I realized it was absolutely ridiculous. But then I said it anyway because I needed to let you know that I would never say anything that dumb. Oh. Oh, YouTube. What have you done to me? Right. So we're going to slow it down a little bit. Fantastic. Back outside. Screenshot. Maybe. Speed limits, man. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like on the one hand, I feel like I'm not, you know, I don't pay enough attention to speed limits. And then, on the other hand, I'm like, uh, I'm always speeding. So, wait, did I say that right? I'm, I'm always late getting into station, so I feel like I'm too mindful of speeding. But at the same time, I'm always speeding. So I feel like it's the worst of all possible scenarios where... You get what I'm saying? Like, I try not to speed, I end up speeding anyway. All it does is make me late. So if I'm going to be speeding anyway, why not speed and be on time? Yeah, I think I said that right. But whatever it is, that's how it goes down. And I think we don't have another stop between here and New Rochelle, huh? We just go straight through. Okay. We can do that. Hop back in here. I don't know what my favorite weather is. I think... I mean, you can't see anything right now. It's just like looking into a glass of milk. So it's not very scenic, but it is immersive and kind of atmospheric. It's like at night, you know driving a train or a truck at night not a lot of visibility right there's not a lot to see but it is kind of uh you know immersive it's got a it's got a feel to it but maybe we should have gone sunny i don't know experimenting with all the different weathers all the different weathers of uh train sim world pick up the pace just a little bit here Now, this is when it gets me, because it just went to 60, and it says in 700 yards it's going to 50. So if I try to accelerate so we land on 50, just about the time we get to the 50, everything will be fine, except out of nowhere it'll drop to like 25. And it does that to me. Oh, game. It does it to me all the time. Like it's, like it knows it's me, and it just wants, ugh, it just wants to mess with me. That's probably not the case, but it'd be funny if it was. If the developers were, like, specifically coding speed limits just to mess with me. Right. So far, so good. So then we'll go to 60. And I think there's a Steam achievement for getting this train up to 100. Have I done that yet? Or 125? I feel like I have. I could be wrong. Right, so we'll get into we'll get into New Rochelle. I'll take a look, see how we did on time, and then I think for the rest of my day, all I really need to do is practice the Bahrain GP for Friday, for F1 Friday, and I think that's about it. I got a farm sim video for tomorrow, and then what's tomorrow? Thursday. Well, tomorrow's technically. Wednesday. I'm recording this on Tuesday to post it on Wednesday. And then tomorrow, Wednesday, etc. And then Thursday, I'll record my Formula One video for Friday. So I think you see what I'm saying. You hear the talk I'm talking. 
and the speed limit is just all over the place. Are you seeing that? It's seriously changing every few seconds and every couple hundred meters. Got me on my toes. And then, what was the other one? I don't have my... I don't... The schedule that I created, I don't know it off the top of my head. I have to keep checking it. And I don't have a copy of it in front of me. But I want to say Train Sim... Yeah, Train Sim on Wednesday. Upton Farm on Thursday. And then Formula One on Friday. Yeah. That makes sense. I had it right the first time. Moment, please. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah. It's the suburbs, man. Hang on, I think we might be... Yeah, speeding. good sound palette in this game too it's it's a little bit tricky to balance it out in recordings I mean in, if you're just gaming you, you can make the volume whatever you want adjust your system volume or, or however you do it but for me recording it's a little a little tricky to try to get the balance just right every time but moment slow down a little bit but the sounds themselves like the volume that's it's not the developers fault that's you know the games weren't when they created the game they weren't creating a game to be recorded they were re making a game did I say that right when they created the game they weren't making a game to be recorded they were making a game to be played so any problems that I have recording it that's my own fault but the sound palette itself is is really nice it's got a lot of layers to it it's got some nice bass to it. This train, man, on a long trip, it's it just kind of lulls you to sleep. It's got this nice low rumble, this bass rumble underneath, and then the electric hydraulic sort of whine up above. It's a train sim world. I'm I'm very impressed. Continue to be impressed. The DLC, I will admit, they're a little small. I think. Every time I get a DLC and hop into it, I'm always like, uh, is there anything else, right? Like you're shaking the, the cereal box, trying to get the toy to come out. Like, is there more in there? Am I missing something? So the, the DLC do tend to be pretty, uh, let's, let's say specific. There, there's a good positive word. They represent a very specific route or a very specific piece of rolling stock. Not the end of the world. They're just um, they are what they are. Yeah, it's a nice way to say it. So I'm always uh, pleased by the quality, but surprised by the volume. And I'm also curious what Dovetail is going to do as far as how many DLC are going to be available for Train Sim World? Is it going to be like Train Simulator where there's just dozens of them, you know, hundreds of them? Or is it going to be a little more uh, speed limit? Messing with my emotions. Is it going to be like Train Sim World where there are dozens and dozens of them plus uh, third-party DLC? Or is it going to be more like... Uh, well, whatever. I can't think of an example, but you know what I mean. A sim that has less DLC. And I also... It's... I understand that there are a ton of reasons why it can't happen. You've got different railroads from different eras in different countries. Different gauge. Different, you know, different everything. But I would like to see, I understand it's impossible, but I would love to see 
dovetail tie all the DLC together. I, the next one that comes out, I know there's two in the in the U.S., there's two in the U.K., there's one in Germany. I feel like the next DLC has to be either somewhere on continental Europe or Japan, maybe. Somewhere. Brazil. But I feel like they can't do another one in the U.S. or the U.K. Not right away. Maybe later. But for now, we got to branch out a little bit. So I understand that it can't be the DLC can't just it can't be like Truck Sim where it just adds on to the edge of what already exists and continues expanding it. I, I get that that can't happen. Alright. Getting close. We're about seven minutes out. Oh, speed limits. Are you seeing this? It is just constantly up and down. The up, they don't bother me because we can always accelerate. It's the down that get me. Particularly when it's a big down, right, where it drops off like 30 or 40 miles per hour. in here. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to make it. Less than seven minutes. Just over seven miles and we're right at 60 miles an hour. But I know we're going to have to slow down when we get close. We always do. So I guess that'll be my test. We can uh, maybe make an effort to stay on the throttle a little longer and then brake a little harder as we get closer. See if we can pick up a little time that way. Six miles, five minutes. Mm, it's going to be really tight. I think we're going to be late. I do not like being late. Not in real life, not in games. All right, that says we're back to 70. I feel like I can't trust the, the speed limit. I mean, I can trust it. Like, I know that it's... That's, the real speed limit it just fascinates me that it goes up and down like that and I'm guessing that has to replicate a an actual like real life thing they don't the developers obviously put a lot of time and effort into making this game very realistic I can't imagine that they would just you know kind of go with whatever for the speed limit right like every other part of the game is so detailed and, and then when it comes to the speed limits they're like yeah Close enough. Uh, I, I imagine it has to be this way in real life for some reason. Alright, what do we got? Almost five miles and four minutes. Oh, it's going to be tight. So we'll try to stay right at or just over the speed limit all the way into New Rochelle. See if we can be mostly on time.
four miles, three minutes. Yeah. We're not going to make it. Although, I mean, we've got just a little bit of 100 mile an hour zone, but just a couple miles of it, we wouldn't be able to make up more than 10 or 15 seconds, I don't think. But we'll try, see if we can squeeze a few seconds out of the timetable. Here we go. Very little frame drop when we pass a train. And for the longest time when you passed another train, that was it seemed like that was what caused the biggest drop. And again, I don't know if it's got something to do with that update that came in this morning. I don't know if it's got to, because I've got new NVIDIA drivers that just downloaded a couple days ago. I don't know. There's always so many moving pieces in game world. You never really know what did what. But... I didn't just now and then earlier in the video when we passed other trains I didn't see any drop in FPS at all and it's not in the past it hasn't been that way so maybe they improved some things don't know could just be a coincidence could be confirmation bias and there's not even an improvement I just I'm just thinking there is who knows Right, 1.6 miles, 45 seconds. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. We're going to be a little bit late. All right, I'm really going to try to... Oh, no, 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 I'm not. We're doing on time. We're a minute late. Uh, it's going to be more like a minute and a half by the time we get stopped. And they also, I remember this from last time, they also seem to want us to stop like in the middle of the platform. Right? It's an awfully long train, but they've got us kind of over here and not up there. Right? Doors open. Left side, you got it. Let's take a look. There you go. Right. And I believe as soon as we're done loading passengers, that will end the service. 
So let's get seated here. See what happens next. And we're right at, well, a little bit long. We're over 50 minutes. I thought we'd be closer to 45, but so it goes. Either way, we're done because we're not. New Rochelle is the end of the line, so another few seconds will be done here. I think I'm going to try MotoGP 2018 later this afternoon and see what I think of that. I don't know if I'll be bringing it to the channel. I actually have, I've got four race sims on the channel right now. There you go. We're done. Um, okay. Interesting. Since we're on time for everything, which I don't really get or agree with, but I'll take it. E, continue. Yes, I do want to continue. And then we got more stuff there. A light here. Objective complete. Beautiful. We're done. Folks, thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Train Sim World Northeast Corridor, NEC DLC. And we will see you next time. Take care now.